Hey everyone, my name is Jamin. This is my YouTube channel, PC Monkey, where I try to bring you a wide variety of do-it-yourself computer upgrade and repair videos. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix an HP computer with a boot loop issue at startup, or it gets stuck restarting, or for whatever other reason, during startup, at or after the HP logo, it's not fully booting up. Couple quick things before we get going. First, please, as always, remember to like and share if this helps you out. Subscribe if you enjoy do-it-yourself tutorials like this. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question, I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. Second and lastly, a quick shout out to my sponsor, NiceHash. NiceHash is the world's largest hash power marketplace. What that means for you is you can rent out your computer's unused and idle power online to people who mine cryptocurrency and they pay for that in Bitcoin. It's a great way to earn some side money with no work. It's a great way to start dabbling in the world of crypto and investigating it with no real investment. You can check them out here or I can fill you in more at the end of the video. So let's get into the project. So just to fill you in on what's happening on this type of issue in an HP computer, what you're seeing is the computer trying to turn on and boot or trying to find an operating system to load and being unable to do so. It either can't locate your hard drive, it can't locate the operating system, but one of those things is happening so it can't boot your operating system. So I'm gonna take you through what I feel are the easiest or the cheapest fixes first, troubleshoot for those, and then move on to the more complicated stuff if those don't prove to be the issue. So here I have my HP laptop that I'm gonna be using for this video. What we're gonna do is make sure it's off, and then we're gonna unplug any external devices, an external mouse, an external keyboard, um, an external hard drive you use for storage, anything, any USB item, any external device that's in your computer, unplug it. Your computer may be accidentally trying to boot off of that instead of your hard drive, obviously not finding an operating system on it, and then giving you this error. So after you've unplugged all of those devices, try starting your computer again. If you're one of the few lucky people that doesn't need to watch the rest of this video and your problem is solved now, then great. What could be happening again is your computer's accidentally booting off of these first or trying to. Go into BIOS at startup, go into your boot order or your boot priority order or your boot list, however your BIOS refers to it, and make sure your hard drive or wherever your operating system is stored, make sure that's first place on that list meaning your computer goes to that first to boot off of to find an operating system. That could be why your computer is trying to boot off something else if your hard drive's not first on that list. If this doesn't solve your issue and you're still getting the same error, we'll move on to the second step. The second thing we're gonna test for is to make sure your hard drive is physically okay. It's not loose, it hasn't come undone somehow. Um, it is a plug-in component, so sometimes if your uh, computer is hit or falls, it could come loose. So I'm gonna take you into a video clip now showing how to open up a computer and do what we call reseeding a hard drive. That's where you unplug it and you plug it back in. Make sure it's secure, secure it with the caddy or screws or whatever you need to do, and then make sure that it's secure. This would also apply to any hard drive cables that attach your hard drive to the motherboard or any hard drive boards that attach your hard drive to the motherboard. We would reseat that whole chain, that whole hard drive chain. So for the sake of an example, I have another laptop computer flipped over here. I'm using this computer because it has an easy access panel. Uh, for the video, it's a lot easier to get into this. Your computer may or may not have one of these. Many computers do, some do not. If you have to take off your entire bottom case because you don't have one, it's a little more complicated, but it's doable. Uh, send me a comment with what brand and model number computer you have, and I can help you get into your computer. Uh, usually you would just unscrew screws that go around it. Uh, sometimes they're under the rubber feet and you would take off your bottom case. For me, it's a little easier. I'm just gonna pop up this little access thing right here, unscrew my single screw that's holding in this panel, and I just pop this panel out like that. So again, it's a lot easier if your computer has an easy access panel. Another thing to look for, guys, you see my computer is sitting on an anti-static pad. Either a pad like this or an anti-static bracelet is a really good idea to limit the chance of harm you can do your computer when entering it. If you guys need a list of supplies, I'm also using a screwdriver and a plastic pry tool. If you guys have any questions on supplies, check out the link above in the video. Um, it'll be a supply tools list that I use here in the shop. So to reseat a hard drive or unplug it and plug it back in, usually hard drives, solid state drives, they're held in by a caddy, 
we're going to unscrew that caddy. And again, this computer ha has two hard drives. Most likely, a lot of you guys, your computer will only have one. But we're going to do the one with the operating system on it if you have two. Going to unscrew the caddy. And then we're going to slide the hard drive away from its port and take it fully out. Make sure that it's held in securely into the caddy. It's not loose, there's actually a, a, a little bit of wiggle there. So I'm gonna tighten my hard drive screws in the caddy. And then I'm gonna set my hard drive back in, make sure it's lined up correctly and give it a good push right into the port. And then I'm gonna screw it back in. That's what we do to reseat a hard drive to make sure that a plug-in connection issue is not the reason why the computer won't see it. So any of you now that have your problem fixed by your hard drive just being loose, great, happy to help. Uh, those of you that don't have it fixed, now we know it's not uh, getting distracted by an external device. We know your hard drive isn't just loose. So now we're proceed to the next step, uh, third step in troubleshooting this problem. So the cool thing about your HP computer is that it comes with built-in diagnostic software. Not all brands of computer come with that. So it's a cool little feature we're going to access now to run a hardware scan. Specifically, we're going to scan your hard drive. Sometimes it's referred to as storage in your hardware scan, or you can run a complete hardware scan on everything. That's not a bad idea either. So I'll show you how to access that now in your HP. Okay, so in most HP computers, you're going to hit the power button and immediately start tapping on the escape key in order to access your diagnostic scan. Some models may use a different key. Check your user manual, Google it, uh, or if you can't find it, let me know in a comment. I can help you out. But most HPs will be escape. So I'm going to hit my power button and the escape key. So now you can see the startup menu. Yours most likely will not look the exact same. There's a lot of different models of HP computers. There's a lot of different versions of BIOS and there's a lot of different versions of this diagnostic stuff. So most likely your screen will not look exactly like this, but you're gonna be looking for the same options. Most of the time you can navigate with your arrow keys or your tab keys. Some of you may still have the use of your mouse. If you don't, try using an external mouse, a USB plug-in mouse, that should get you around. Um, or again, you can use your arrow or tab keys usually. So I'm gonna arrow down to where it says system diagnostics. Some of you may have a hot key like I do, you can hit F2, but I'm gonna hit enter now on the system diagnostics. And a lot of you will have a screen that looks like this. I have a memory test, a hard drive check, language or exit. So either you're gonna see hard drive check, you're gonna see storage check, or you may see variations of that, a, a short DST, long DST. Uh, try running the short scan first, but that's what we're going to go to down here. Hard drive check. I'm going to hit enter. So here I'm seeing the option. Many of you will have already seen quick or extensive. Uh, I generally just run the quick scan. If your hard drive's bad, the quick scan's going to pick it up. So I'm, I'm going to hit enter on the quick scan. And now it's starting the hard drive check. Okay, so again, just like your test may not look the exact same when you access it, your results may not look the same. I'm getting very quick results, smart check passed, short DST passed. You may get a much larger screen showing you a lot of different components passing or failing, but that's what we're looking for. Now we're looking for our hard drive to pass that test. Just to go over a few test results, you can see what they mean and what to do. The first option, either your hard drive fails the test or it says it can't access your hard drive, can't see your hard drive, or for whatever other reason can't run the test, it's not available. If that's the case, either your hard drive's bad or it's loose. If you ran the diagnostic test first because maybe you thought the hard drive was harder to access and you haven't reseated it yet, now you would want to reseat your hard drive, make sure it's not just loose. Then you would run the scan again after doing that. If it still shows up as bad or not being able to be seen, I'm pretty confident at this point your hard drive is bad. You would want to replace the hard drive, install an operating system to the new one. I'll have links below how to install Windows 10, how to install Windows 11 for free. Uh, so you can use those links after you install the new hard drive. If your hard drive passes the test like mine did, then we know it's not an external drive issue. We've tested for that. We know the hard drive's not loose. And now we know that it's a healthy hard drive. So we're left with either BIOS issues and settings or an operating system issue at this point. We'll continue on with the video and continue troubleshooting for those.
Another option is you're not able to run this scan for some reason. It won't access, it says it's unavailable, the scan won't start. If the scan doesn't start, then we cannot test whether your hard drive is healthy or not. And if you've reseeded it, it's not a simple matter of it just can't see it. So at that point, we don't know if your hard drive is bad. We would still proceed assuming it's good. We would test for some BIOS issues and some operating system issues. And then if those don't work, then we're left with a bad hard drive. But either way, we'll move on now with testing for some BIOS issues. Okay, so we're going to hit the option to go back to the main menu. You may have to start your computer again and then access the other options, but I'm going to come down to exit, get out of here. Now the next thing I'm going to have you check is some BIOS settings. You may need to go back to the main menu like I did. You may need to restart the computer, re-enter BIOS. In some HPs you hit F12. Um, again, if those don't work, try your other function keys, look it up online, message me if, if you need to. But we're going to access BIOS, and the first thing I'm going to have you check is your date and time settings. As mentioned before, most of your BIOS systems will not look exactly like mine. There's many different versions, but you're going to explore your tabs, go through your menus, find your date and time settings, make sure they're correct. It sounds like a little thing, but if your BIOS date and time settings are not correct, it could interfere with your computer booting up. So make sure they're correct, save the changes, restart the computer. If your computer starts up, then great, you found your issue. As a side point, some of you, one of the frequently asked questions I get on this part is what if you have to make that change every time you start your computer? You always have to go in BIOS and change your date and time because every time you shut your computer off, it resets. That could be a sign that your motherboard is losing power every time you restart your computer. A CMOS battery is usually the component on a laptop motherboard that's responsible for maintaining power even when the computer's off. If you're losing your date and time settings every time you power down, it could be a sign that your CMOS battery is dead and needs to be replaced. I'll have a video link below in the description on how you can access that component in a computer and swap it out. If that turns out to not be your issue, we're gonna go a little deeper into BIOS now and start some repair options. Uh, assuming it's an operating system issue, there are some things we can repair in BIOS. So just as another reminder, your BIOS may not look the same, but I'm gonna go down here to System Restore. It most likely will be called the same thing in your computer, it may just be called Restore, and you may have to look around your tabs for it, but that's what we're gonna to try to find. We're gonna to try to find either the Restore options and try those, Sometimes you'll see repair options, we'll try those. And for some of you, if this error occurred after you ran a system update, uh, we're gonna try to find an option that says undo last system update. At this point, if you have tried your repair option, your restore option, your undo last update option, if you've tried those and they fail to fix the problem, or if you're unable to try them for whatever reason, most likely at this point, we're looking at a bad operating system, a corrupted operating system, and it's probably gonna to have to be reinstalled. There'll be video links below in the description on how to create Windows 10 and Windows 11 install media for free. And then there'll also be links in the description on how you can use those install media USBs to install Windows into your computer for free. At this point, we've troubleshooted all the possible causes, loose hard drive, external devices, uh, bio settings, a bad hard drive, um, restoring your operating system. At this point, we're left with the operating system reinstall. Um, those of you who nothing else worked, this should solve your problem. The last remaining group of you, the ones who could not run the diagnostic scan and could not verify that your hard drive is healthy and you tried reinstalling the operating system and that didn't work, that most likely means your hard drive is bad. At that point, you would replace the hard drive, install the OS to the new one. So as mentioned earlier in the video guys, if you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. As time goes on, I do try to keep those updated. If you don't see your question there, leave it for me in the comments. I do try to address those as often as possible. As promised earlier, a few extra words now on my sponsor NiceHash. So as mentioned before, NiceHash, they're the world's largest hash power marketplace. They're a full service exchange, a one-stop shop for all things crypto. You can rent out your computer's unused, untapped power online to crypto miners, and they pay you for that power in Bitcoin. It's a great way to earn some side money. It's a great way to earn Bitcoin with no work. And it's a great way to start dabbling and investigating the world of crypto without risking an investment. You already own your computer. Most of us have computers far more powerful than anything we need day to day. And this is a great way to put that to work and, and earn some money. 
They also have an exchange feature where you can swap out for other cryptocurrencies. They have research tools to research what's going on with various other cryptocurrencies. They even have a quick miner where you can try mining yourself. So there's a lot of different resources there. Check it out here. Or again, leave me any sort of comments you have and I'll try to help you out. Thank you so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.